Does our refrigerator work? Well, maybe you can help me answer that question. Some of you have been following my uh, saga with regard to this Dometic refrigerator. And I'm gonna try to respond to the questions because I'm actually not sure if it's fixed, but I've got my fingers crossed that maybe it is. So we took it in um, over a month ago and they said it was not the refrigerator, that it was uh, the propane line needed a new solenoid valve. So they replaced that and, and then sent us on our way and we immediately took off on a trip. But before that though, before we left, I purchased this device. It's called a sensor push. And this is actually, here, I installed it right here. This is what it looks like. And it sends uh, your, it communicates with your telephone via Bluetooth. And it sends a message every minute to tell you what the temperature is in your refrigerator. And that was probably the best thing I've ever done. I've had other sensors that, you know, whether it's a probe that you stick in here, the RV uh, repair people left me with this one, which is accurate, but who wants to open the refrigerator door to check the temperature? But that's good for confirming that your, uh, whatever you're using is accurate. So, okay, so I have the data now to uh, show you the temperature that we experienced on our one week trip. And this device, and I will, I'll insert some clips on how this thing um, looks on your phone. But this is the data. It comes back as, you can export it as a CSV file and then convert it into an Excel spreadsheet. And I don't know, oh, because this is backwards. I will show, I'll insert the, this to show you the temperature variations we experienced on the first few days. Now, the first, uh, the first day was on the battery of the car. And then overnight, when we camped at Crowley Lake, it was on propane. And we hit a high of 60 degrees. And for almost the, in, yeah, for the entire first two days, we were well above 40 degrees in the refrigerator, which to me, I, you know, the goal is to get it around 40 degrees. Anything starting to creep up past that, then you, then you worry about food spoilage. So I wasn't happy with that at all. Um, and the other thing too is I could smell propane in the car, in the, in the van for the first probably three or four days. I kept sensing the smell of propane. That went away and when we were at our son's house, we were plugged into shore power. Uh, and the nighttime, so on, on the second day when we left Crowley, the temperature outside was 43 degrees and I looked at my phone to see what the temperature was in the van. It was 44 degrees. And I thought, well, th this just can't be right. I have it all the way set to max and it's colder outside than it is inside the fridge. So that just didn't seem right. So I was getting this feeling that something's still not right with this thing. Okay, so we hooked up to shore power and about the third or fourth day noticed a big drop in the temperature. And at night, as I um, had done in the past, I would have to, uh, to uh, lower, the, lower the setting to a lower setting so food wouldn't freeze. The other thing I did on this second day, which I don't know if it m was something that helped or not, was I had done some research and discovered this thing called the thermistor that's in your refrigerator. Now, this is the thermistor. I actually unscrewed it. Let me see if I can take this tape off. So I unscrewed it from where it was screwed in. It was screwed in down here in that hole because I discovered that this thing can tells, kind of sends a message to the propane system to, to uh, either, you know, more cold or more heat. So when you move it up, you are reducing, supposedly reducing the temperature in the vehicle or in the, in the appliance. And so I taped it there because there's not a hole to screw into. So I taped it there. So I don't know if that's what affected the drop in temperature or what happened. So, um, you know, one other problem that we had was that when we got this rig, we got a huge booklet of, you know, the, the information 
on how to work everything, but we did not get one for the refrigerator. So I had to actually, I looked on the Pleasure Way site to see, but I couldn't discover it there either. And I looked on the Dometic website, which is not helpful at all. And so I finally emailed uh, Pleasure Way to ask them what model it was. I'd also asked Pleasure Way whether a refrigerator should, you know, what are the parameters for a three-way refrigerator? I mean, what should we expect from it? And I have not uh, gotten any satisfactory answer. I would love to talk to an expert on this sort of thing to find out so that all of you would know what you should expect, what's normal and what's not normal about a three-way fridge and how it operates. So, uh, so I, um, Pleasure Way did email me the book. And um, so, you know, I will be studying that and we'll have it with us all the time because it's a PDF and we've now, you know, gotten every, every booklet um, via PDF and we can keep it on our, on our iPads. Um, but I am just so happy with this because it has, um, you know, just given me a peace of mind so I know what the temperature is. We will probably still continue to carry with us our little small ice chest in case something goes wrong and we need to, uh, you know, put something that's perishable in, on, on ice. Um, but for, you know, fruits and vegetables and cheese and things like that, it doesn't really matter so much. Um, but I'm going to go inside now and show you a little bit how this, what this looks like on your phone if you decide to get one. It's about $50. And uh, you can see whether it's something that might be helpful to you. So this is the screen you get from the sensor push. It's telling me that temperature is 83.4 degrees and the relative humidity is 56.2. Now, when you want to send yourself uh, the data, then you hit the settings up here and you go down where it says export CSV for all sensors. So if I touch that, you can set the increment level. Uh, so I can set it, the frequency. I, can, I had set it for 15 minutes. I wanted to report every 15 minutes. And then you set the date. And so you edit the date. Um, so September 13th, you can set the time, and then you hit OK, and then you hit the ending time, and you edit that. Uh, obviously, we don't wanna go backwards in time, and so you would set the date for it to end the report. Hit OK, and then you hit Export, and you tell it your email address, and then I will go to my email and show you what the report looks like. Okay, so this is the Excel spreadsheet that tells me the temperatures. And I actually had set it to tell me between September 7th and when we got home. So you can go, I'll scroll down here a little bit. Hopefully that will show you how consistently below 40 degrees it was. And finally, by the last several nights, I had to turn the temperature down to like two bars instead of five because it was starting to get close to freezing in the refrigerator. So there's that. And then on the way home, you know, we were up into the 90s driving through the desert and it was still uh, maintained a 40 degree temperature and I still hadn't turned it up to maximum. So I'm just scrolling through here. And so I don't, you know, I don't know whether it was the moving of that thermistor that did finally solved the problem, but here now you can see 33 degrees. I'm gonna call this thing fixed, but if you have any knowledge about what we should expect from a refrigerator, whether this is normal, uh, if you know an expert who wouldn't mind <laughs> an interview or something, uh, that would be great. I'd love to hear your comments. But so that's my update on the refrigerator. And thank you very much for watching.